hello family and friends welcome back to my youtube channel i am your host oyena and thank you so much for joining me again in the space in this channel where we unpack all things career related navigating your 20s faith love and vlogs here and there to get to know me better so i just want to say thank you so much for my new subscriber and my existing subscribers this home is growing and i'm learning so much from just sitting and sharing with you guys i sit and have so many reflections of what i can do better and where i can improve and what videos that i can share with you that are going to be impactful for you to be a better person and be better for those around you so without wasting any I'm so excited today because today is the last video related to Korea and this video was was suggested by one of you guys that I must share on salaries in the audit space or in the accounting field and yeah I thought let me just wrap up this year with this video and I really think that it's quite a timeless video because majority of like your final year students are looking forward to start work next year they're looking forward to signing contracts choosing where to go to all of those considerations that come with making a decision related to where you're going to work next year so if you are in that place or in that position i hope this is going to help you give you more insight and if you know someone who needs to know more about this please please kindly share to those that you know they need it and this is going to be helpful in making the right decisions for next year in fact even if you're not going to work next year in a few years to come you are going to be prepared and ready to know um all the factors that go into choosing the right offer so this is going to be like i said this is the last video related to korea but there's one more video that we're going to have and then we're going to go to december collaborations i am so excited so um so this december we are having collaborations Okay, not collaborations as if it's going to be every day, but um, this channel is going to have something new. I know you guys are excited to see me. You love seeing me, but I'm excited that I'm going to have other people in the channel and hopefully next year as well. I'll see you guys next year related to Korea. You can also drop your suggestions in the comment section that I can keep and plan and know that I am going to address or share and unpack with you next year. So, without wasting any further time, let's get right into it. Important disclaimer though is that I'm not a certified career advisor as well as everything that I share in this platform is not affiliated to my employer. It's not the opinion of my employer. So, everything that I say is based on what I know, um, is based on data that is on the market so you can verify on the market but this is not a set in stone information that you can run with or also affiliated with my employer so let's get into it first things first i decided let me break this down to help those who will take maybe a different career route um into small firms media firms and big firms so if you're in an accounting space especially audit cssa training space you'll understand that this is how we like compartmental these firms in most in most cases that are they working in a small firm or a medium firm and a large firm so what is the difference between those and what are the factors that are considered in those um firms or companies and as well as if you are in the audit space fully or you are in the finance banking investment space Right, so if you are familiar with um, TIP or TOP, so TIP, you are training in the audit space, TOP, you are training in your financial um, related companies where you're not necessarily going to be doing auditing on a daily basis. All right, so to tackle, on a, to tackle or start with small firms, uh, and particularly if you are in a small firm and doing audit work, even though you're on the route of being a CA or not even being a CA, this might be applicable to you. So normally what we find in small firms is that because it's a small firm, it has not attracted clients which bring them like big or large amount of revenue for them to compensate you well. And as a result of that, you are most likely to work hard 
and compensated less and when i say less sometimes even below market related salary so that's what you get in a small firm and chances of growing are quite slim because the big focus here is to grow the company itself more than it grow it grows its people its staff its employees and everyone that works hard to bring the money in the big goal here is to grow the company get more clients so that it sets the company into the market that it's known and that it is present so you're most likely to not get compensated well and lots of working hours are involved there Another thing is that if you don't have uh, your qualifications that are prescribed by a professional body, you're most likely to get a job in a small firm. They're not quite strict in terms of what board exam you have, what post um, qualification you have. Maybe as long as you have a diploma and a degree and you're studying while working with them, they're going to take you on board. But it's so challenging because you're working so hard, you need to study and you're not even compensated that much. Um, I think it's also like similar in terms of being in a small firm, but in a finance space. You're also just looking at the same factors that the company is looking to grow, looking to attract more clients. Therefore, your focus, their focus is not compensating you well or giving you more benefits. Right. So moving on to a medium, firm. medium firms. I strongly believe medium firms are a little bit similar to smaller firms, but there's a bit of a difference, which is in medium firms, there's potential to grow, particularly because they're also growing and wouldn't want to leave their people like not performing well or not being compensated well. They'd want to keep you happy as much as they want to keep themselves happy. However, another big thing is that in the medium firms, you're still being paid slightly below market related prices market related salary slightly it's doable if you live within your means but the amount of work is still load it's still a lot so you'll have to navigate that as well they're also not quite strict in terms of post qualification but they'll they will definitely need you to have a degree um, maybe a year of experience if you're not going through the traditional CSA route um, they will definitely need that from you so you need to decide what kind of appetite you have for work where are you in your life are you studying something that you can do part-time are you studying something that you have to only do full-time so uh, and if that's the case then you have to <laughs> you have to without a doubt have to make the decision knowing that this is what this is a cost that it comes with. Um, I wouldn't advise to go to work or find work while studying because it's quite, it's really quite difficult unless you have to. If you've watched my previous video, I do share that I had to. Um, that's why I had to go through a whole lot. It's really not nice. So I would certainly not advise you to do that if you have an option. So the good thing about the medium uh, companies is that if you're in the finance space, there's really opportunity for you to build your CV, um, build your CV in a sense that you can break the market in bigger firms because you've created this, you've gained this experience, created this brand, and then they will give a chance that you join them. So medium firms are not all bad. You just need to be fully aware at the expectations that they have a few and then decide that you want to do this or you don't want to do it and it's it's okay if you don't want to it's okay actually to reject an offer it is okay i've done it before um it doesn't feel good at the time because you're like oh oh my god i don't want to regret it but if you have thought of it thoroughly um then you've made the right decision based on important factors in your life um you you really be grateful that you chose to reject that offer right now let's get to a big firms big company you have your qualification you have your post grad you're excited you're starting your work what are the salaries looking like so if you're in the traditional csa stream it will differ based on if you're first year second year or third year it will differ based on do you have your board exam do you have your obviously some do you have your cta or do you have yeah do you do have your two board exams those are the factors that goes in to decide 
how much you're getting and yeah so starting off gross this is market related so i'm not gonna have one amount i'm gonna have a range of amount um for each level so i will start with in the audit space for first year you're most likely to get to earn around seventeen thousand to twenty thousand if you have passed your first board exam yep so um i know people thought that <laughs> ca trainees are rich we're not so you're likely gonna earn within that range and if you don't have your board exam you're gonna earn slightly lower between 14 and 16 thousand that is like your gross and as a first year in an audit space being a second year in the audit firms you're most likely to earn around 21,000 to 25,000 if you have your APC, which is known as your second board exams exam. And yeah, and if you don't have your board exam in your second year, so I'm going to earn between 20 and 23,000. Depend that's why I'm giving you a range because it differs it differs with each firm. And yeah, but that's more likely the range of what you're going to get. And if you're third year, the range between firms will d definitely differ. So if you're in your third year, you're most likely to earn around 25, 28, 29, 30. Now, on the finance side, top side, in your banking, in your insurance, investment companies, you're most likely to earn 20% more than what first year, second year, third year trainees earn in the audit space. So minimum 20% and above. So it can literally be anything more than 20%, right? Um, I think this is driven by the fact that they, they, their intake is lower than audit firms intake in terms of number of trainees. So if you're gonna take less people, you have more money to pay the few trainees that you have recruited unlike in the audit firms and the big firms they take a larger number of trainees because they have more clients more work so they'll need more people to do the work to be able to save costs they are going to be hiring less people and pay them a little bit okay amount of salaries so yeah those are the factors that so those are the factors that go into this uh, deciding how much trainees are being paid where are they uh, where are they training or if you're an accountant um fine, uh, a trainee accountant or you are just a general accountant you're not uh working in the ca traditional route i think things are going to be a bit, diff bit different you might actually start at a higher 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 salary like you might even start at thirty thousand because you are not going to progress based on board exams you're going to progress based on uh experience so you are not gonna be like the trainees the csa trainees who are dependent on their competencies excuse me qualifying to be chartered accountants so there's a little bit of a difference i know some trainees feel like oh we are paying less which we are not paid a lot but eventually it will come we'll be we'll be happy we'll be happy so stay strong remain 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 on the course and then another thing important thing is net your net what are the factors that are involved in your net income there are compulsory deductions and then there are voluntary deductions so in compulsory deductions deductions you have things like your tax your uif your pension and other companies they have pension and provident fund optional but other companies they don't have that optional even with medical aid other firms literally want you to have their own prescribed medical aid um company or scheme and then other companies will want you to have a medical scheme or be under any medical aid but not allow you to not completely be under any other medical aid so it will definitely differ and then you have slightly you'll slightly be on the same range with your peers but then it will definitely depend on your expenses how much you're spending and how much you're retaining we are not the same guys we are literally not the same we could be both third year trainees and one looks like an entire manager they have all the money and you're like 
barely surviving and there's a lot of factors that come into this some live way beyond the um, means you're moving into this expensive apartment you're excited you want people to know that you're working you buy this expensive car there's insurance you don't do the necessary checks and you're like I need them to know that I am a CASA to be. You're not there yet. You're not there yet. And all of those things and other people literally come from families where they don't have to do anything. They don't have to um, provide or help financially at their homes. They just have a car given to them by their parents. They stay at home. So you can't really compare yourself to those people so yeah that will be really all from me i think this was comprehensive enough for you to make a right decision but if you need to know more and you know know more in day in depth please kind of reach out to me on any social media platform i'm on instagram i'm on linkedin or share your comments down below or send me an email my email is also included here and then we can chat even further but i hope this is helpful and hope it helps you if you know that anyone needs this please be kind and share it literally this channel is growing on its own <laughs> please be kind and collaborate with me and then we're gonna reach those this channel needs to reach thanks so much guys see you guys soon bye